UV filter can kill 99.99% of the microorganisms in a water supply. And this is especially important if you're going to do whole house filtration uh, or if you're going to store water in a tank for a long period of time, let's say longer than two weeks, bacteria can bloom in a tank. So we want to have a UV filter installed so we can cycle the water through the UV filter while it's in storage and keep the water really clean, bacteria free. In a whole house environment, well, it's the same thing. Whole house RO has a storage tank and if you're on vacation it's letting it sit, you don't want bacteria to bloom, so we use them in that situation as well. Now a third reason we use a UV filter is to treat a well water supply. Quite often we get calls here and we get water tests, lots of water tests, uh, and there's bacteria in the well. Uh, and so a UV filter is a must and it's usually installed before an RO filter to keep the bacteria from growing in the pre-filters of an RO filter. Uh, and it's also, we use one after the RO filter to kill the bacteria on the way to the tank. UV filters, ultraviolet water filters, are rated by what gallon per minute flow rate of water can go through them that they can treat. The smallest UV filter that we have is a one gallon per minute. All of Gerlonics UV filters are stainless steel. And so at one gallon per minute, that covers everything from 400 gallons a day and under. A 400 gallon a day water filter flows about 0.3 gallons a minute top speed. So a one gallon a minute UV is three times the flow rate headroom to cover the water going through it. So it's a good match for everything 400 gallon a day and under. Let's take a look at a UV 1530. This is a one gallon per minute stainless steel UV filter. Inside the box, you're going to get some plastic quarter inch RO fittings for it. The UV body itself, stainless steel. Here's the bulb for it. We're going to open that up right now, take it out right here. Put this over here. We're also going to have four plastic clips for mounting it to the different filters. And a ballast. Let me take the bulb out of the box. I'm not going to take it out of the plastic yet though because I don't want to touch it. So there's two ways you can mount this UV filter and we're going to show you both of those ways. If you own an EX100, 150, or 200, or a GX150 or 200, or an EX400, you're simply going to snap the bigger side of the clip over the membrane housing, just like that, and then you take the UV filter snap it on like that. Now once the UV body is installed uh, you have these quarter inch male connectors and they come pre-taped from the factory here and you're just going to thread them in and then with a small wrench just tighten them up. I'm not going to tighten them up here for this demonstration. Uh, and you're more than welcome to use the quarter inch stem elbows that come in the UV kit to route the tubing more horizontally rather than having the tubing come in from above. You don't need to though, but it's there for you to use. The next thing we want to do is make sure the end cap is snug. And I'm going to pull one off to show you what it looks like underneath. The quartz sleeve that houses the bulb is, is in here. And there is an O-ring. And you want to tighten this thing until you feel the cap touch the o-ring right there and just a little bit more not too much and it's good to go the next procedure is to insert the bulb now the bulb has a metal uh, end cap and I, it's okay to touch that just don't touch the glass itself and if you do simply take a clean towel and wipe it off now these bulbs have um, uh, connections electrical connections on both ends Okay. The electrodes uh, 
reach through this cap on both ends. So, unlike the bigger UVs, we have to wire up the ballast on both ends before we insert the bulb into the stainless housing. So the wiring harness for the bulb has uh, connection points down here, the brown wires, and two connection points above, the black wires. Simply take the bulb, don't touch the glass, and connect the black wires like that. And then you can take the other end of the bulb and connect the brown wires. They go on really easy. Uh, they're just push connect fittings. And now we're going to insert the bulb into the stainless housing. And it'll go in and you'll feel it bottom out in the end, in the back of the housing. Then you simply take the plastic uh, retaining cap and slide it over the stainless housing like that. And it's uh, just that simple. If you're going to mount this UV to a GX400, you can use these, these quarter 20 by half inch stainless black oxide socket cap screws on the top to mount the single clips that come with the UV filter. So we're going to remove these socket cap screws. Now we're going to thread on these two single clips. These are two inch clips made for holding the UV. And we're simply going to thread them in like that. And I'm going to pull the UV off of the GX200. And on the GX400, it snaps right in place just like that. And it's just that simple. So running, running the plumbing to a UV filter is quite simple. Uh, there is no dedicated input and output. These are bi-directional. As long as the water goes in one end and comes out the other, the UV is going to do its job. So what we want to do is take the RO output, the permeate water output, which is usually located right here on the bottom of the ASV. This would normally be running to your storage tank or reservoir. And we want to take that, insert a line there, and just run that line up to one end of the UV, like so. Now, take another piece of quarter inch tubing, and you'll run this to your storage tank or reservoir. So we have taken the water from the bottom of the auto shutoff valve, the ASV, run it up to the UV, and then out of the UV, into the storage tank or reservoir or drinking water supply, whatever. And hooking up a UV is that, uh, that simple. Now the last thing to do is to plug it in. Now this is very important. You're going to notice on the ballast a green light came on. Okay, That's telling you uh, that the lamp is on. The lamp inside this UV filter. Now it's very important to know that you should never look at a UV bulb while it's illuminated and thus never uh, ignite it, never plug it in while the bulb is out of the stainless housing because it's, the UV rays are damaging to uh, your eyes so you never want to stare at a UV bulb. So make sure it's inserted before you turn it on. To know that it's working you'll know that the light on here is green. Now if this light is not green and illuminated, that means the bulb is burned out or there's no power to the transformer itself. But if the transformer is plugged into 120 volt mains uh, and this bulb is out, that means the bulb in the UV needs to be replaced. A lot of people ask, uh, do I leave the bulb on all the time? Do I let it go off? The answer is, you leave this bulb on 24-7. If you have bacteria in the water supply that you're concerned about, which is probably why you own a UV already, uh, that bacteria could get into the UV and swim out into the storage tank if the bulb is not on. If you shut that bulb off at night, then bacteria can come through the UV. 
and then make their way to the storage tank. So leave this on 24-7. This ensures that no bacteria will make it through the UV. After a year, the ability for a UV bulb to be effective against microorganisms declines rapidly. So after a year, pull the old bulb out, put a new bulb in, uh, plug it in, and you're good to go.